Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show on this Monday. I'm Peter Martin. Thank you very much for your company. Alan Ruff and Barry Ferguson are with me here in the studio to look back over a painful weekend if you're a Scotland fan. Well, it was a win. Scotland <coughs> defeated San Marino by two goals to <coughs> nil. Um, let's have a look at the overall 90 minutes in the company of our reporter, Gabriel Antoniazzi. Scotland started to a 2-0 win over San Marino, one of the world's worst teams yesterday. The performance on the pitch was underwhelming and despite having the lion's share of possession and plenty of chances, Scotland looked very nervy until a late goal from Johnny Russell doubled their advantage. The manager and the players were resoundingly booed off at the full-time whistle, with chants about Alex McLeish and the SFA loudly sung throughout the game by the Tartan Army. The win leaves Scotland fifth place in Group I, with only San Marino behind them. The national team will now not play again until June, when Cyprus visit Hamden before an intimidating visit to Brussels to play the number one ranked team in the world. McLeish has called for the country to back him and his side, and while he is likely to be backed by his employers, whether the fans and indeed the players are behind him is another matter altogether. Yep, it was a difficult one to watch. I found it painfully slow at times, uh, Ruffy, and I can understand the feelings of the Tartan army. Yeah, I think we all thought when the first goal went in so early on in the game there was going to be a few to follow that, uh, but obviously we made uh, really, really heavy weather of it. You know, I think if the second goal had went in maybe just before half time, it maybe got some people to relax a wee bit. But you can see, yeah, there was a lot of nerves going about, you know, I, we've already spoke about it. A very, very novice team, you know, back four, average age of 22, no experience in it at all, you know, and uh, you could see any time they did go forward, there was a wee bit of nervousness not to lose that goal. But I think we all expected better because we know we have got good players in that team and hopefully it was just one of these games that uh, you move on to the next game and hopefully we get better. Yeah, Alec made changes uh, to the side. Uh, James <coughs> Forrest obviously um, took his place on the bench. Um, clearly, he, he obviously had to make some changes along the way. Were they the right changes in your mind? Did they surprise you, Barry? Yeah, some of them surprised me. Look, I, I, I do think he was correct in making some changes, but for me, James Forrest is uh, one of the best Scotland players. Um, so I was surprised that he wasn't in the starting 11. Um, you seen the difference when he came on, he created three or four chances in the space of five or ten minutes. Um, but look, the, the only positive I can take out of that game is it's three points. The performance was a bit flat, and I'll use the word that Ruffy just used there. Uh, there was, uh, they were nerves. You could see that in the players. Um, they were playing safe passes, if you like. Uh, so, look, it was a tough one because obviously the Tartan Army um, were giving the boys a bit of stick um, and the, the board. So, look, that's when you need big characters to, to stand up and, and, uh, and handle the, the pressures. But look, it's a tough because it is a young, a young team. Um, but look, the main thing is the guys <coughs> get three points and then they can move forward now to the next games. Yeah, uh, strangely enough, uh, Ruffy, Gordon Strachan, I thought, made a great point yesterday when he was analysing the game. Uh, you know, quite simply, we don't have players <clears throat> that are of a certain class anymore. And I'm not even talking about in your day. I'm talking about even in a situation where uh, Barry's team that came really, really close to getting to a major finals. We don't have goal scorers. No, I don't have any goal scorer playing uh, in a really, really top team at a really, really top level. I mean, I know Gordon touched on Lukaku and all them. We're never, ever going to get one of these. But, you know, you, you, you would think of the players that we had. And I go to McCoist as well. You know, McCoist was playing European football, you know. And I don't know about Barry, but I, I, when I always was, at, was in a, an international dressing room and the team was sitting there, I'd be looking about the dressing room going, who are the match winners? 
know, who's the guy if we toil out there the night is going to come up with something special? And there was always somebody in that dressing room. You could look around about and you went, he could do it. It was Davy Cooper. You know, he could come up with something magic, you know, and, and the players in the dressing room as well. John Robertson, you'd Joe Jordan, you'd guy, big, big players who knew where it was to dig your team out of uh, yeah. uh, a situation. And Billy's <coughs> problem had them in the dressing room as well. You, yeah. you need well, I can somebody. think back to a McAvaney, a, a Charlie yeah, Nicholas, yeah, yeah. you know, somebody that could do something a wee bit out of the ordinary. But, you know, not not now. I'm looking, I mean, I look <coughs> at the starting 11, and of course, obviously, as Barry mentioned, James Forrest, come on, but. The back four, apart from Andy Robertson, you know, you, Bates and McKenna don't fill me with any great confidence. You know, McLean and McGregor, it wasn't, you know, it, it, it wasn't anything that you say to yourself. You're looking at them and you're, you're looking up front, Callum Patterson, that, there was nothing there that suggested to me that we're going to be able to carve open a side that's just going to sit in and defend and, and so it un, as it unfolded over the 90 yeah. minutes No, what you've done what you're doing is you're throwing people into positions that are, are just learning their trade at international level I mean you stick the boy McLean in you know he's not that many caps he gets a goal which will give him confidence you've got Russell in there who's no, still finding his way you know you get Patterson who gets stuck up front who's still fielding his way so for me, the, the disappointment for me was the midfield because I think that uh, the Armstrong McGregor's, you know, I think they've got something to offer. You know, I, I did touch on it the other day. I think it's been too much of a rise for McGregor to be made captain of a national side. I think you you put a lot of pressure on him. I thought we should have just let him just be as he is. You know, the Celtic player that we see uh, who is magnificent week in, week out. I just think it, whether it's affected him, you know, having that responsibility... Who knows? I, I, I'm not so sure I buy into that, uh, Barry, mm. you know, because at the end of the day, he's not a young mm. boy anymore. He's been around a bit. He can handle Champions League games. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, I think against Kazakhstan, he looked more of a holding midfielder than the creative midfielder that we all come to expect to actually, you know, can boss and dictate the pace of a game. Mm. But I, I, I think there. I, I just think overall we've got nobody other than James Forrest, mm -hmm. you know, at times, maybe Ryan Fraser in a push, but collectively who can go and take a game. Yeah. You know, we're talking about Northern Ireland. We, you and I have discussed this already. Northern Ireland don't have any great players, yeah. but they're organised, they're well organised, they keep it tight, and then they pick their moments. We should be doing that. Yeah, but I think, Alec, I'll look at it. I mean, I look at the squad, you can go on Andy Roberts and Kieran Tierney. Me, for me, two fantastic fullbacks, best probably in Europe. Get away a good shout. You've got McGinn, McGregor, Armstrong, James Forrest. Hopefully, Lee Griffiths comes back for his personal issues. Uh, uh, Fraser, another one who on his day um, plays at the highest level with Bournemouth every week uh, in the Premier League down in England. So we have got good players. So I think Alec just needs to get these group, uh, these group of players together, and get a formation that suits that we can fit all these players in. And yeah. so going on about McGregor, I, I don't think that would have affected. He had a bad day <coughs> at the office. Yeah, uh, Callum McGregor. The guy's allowed to have a a bad game. I, th I think we get the armband. I don't think it would burden him. Um, I think he can handle pressure. I, th I think he's a fantastic football player. He can play holding midfield. He can play further forward. He can play on the left-hand side. For me, he's going to be a mainstay of the, the Scotland team for years to come. Do you think the manager should be sacked? No, I think it's far too early. I'll be honest with you, I do. Too early for me. And I know, I think it was newspapers doing polls, 85%. Who, who are you going to bring in? Who, who is there? They bring in. I say it's about the start. I thought they were too hasty in getting rid of Gordon Stratton. Walter Smith didn't fancy it. Michael O'Neill obviously stayed with Northern Ireland. Um, Alec then was the obvious choice. He's come in. He's got us into the semi-finals. Um, he's got the win. It wasn't great to watch. But listen, he got the three points on board. And we just need to see where he takes us for, for now. Um, but I think you've got to give him time. I think it would be far too early to, to sack him. Yeah, I, th I think if a manager comes into a job and you give him a target to go for, you, you at least give him the chance to get that target. You know, it might fail maybe three quarters of the way through it, and then you have to make decisions if it's impossible for us to, you know, to to qualify, and, and then let the next person come in and deal with the, the, the Nations Cup. You know, but I think you've got to give him a fair crack at the whip. 
Do you think now is the right time to sack the Scotland manager Alex McLeish? Give us your thoughts on YouTube, on Facebook and on Twitter as well. Uh, we'll continue to talk about Scotland in the forthcoming games in the summer. Uh, but uh, let's have a look at Monday's quiz. I just thought we'd have a Scotland victory in there just to lift us all, <laughs> Ruffy. Yeah, yeah. You just need to look at the players that were on show there. Yeah. Some fantastic players. Oh, all mixed absolutely. Days and I think Richard Goff was in there as well. Um, some no bad players there. Yeah, your career was over by then, Ruffy, 1990. Yeah. You had yeah, but that's the kind of experience we're talking about that we've not got. You know, we've, we've got players in that line-up there who, if it was the other night and things weren't going well, they could do something about it. <laughs> did, I, did I give away the year there, Ruffy? Uh, <laughs> did I? Did I? <laughs> not sure. Anyway, nevertheless, still a chance to win a, your yeah. T-shirt, your own <laughs> favourite uh, <laughs> your own favourite colours <laughs> yep. of your own favourite team. Um, that quiz is going all the way through to Friday, by the way. <laughs> You'll, now that I've said it, everybody will be rewinding it. Um, nevertheless, uh, yeah, I mean, listen, we'd love players like that. We don't have them. I don't know where we're going to get them. Um, you know, is it a four or five year wait for a for a Karamoko Dembele if he decides to play for Scotland? Is it a Billy Gilmore? No, is it someone else coming up I through think, the ranks? I think this, this bunch that Barry's mentioned are still very, very young. You know, two or three years with them, you know, getting the experience in international football and possibly European football under their belt, particularly the midfield. The midfield is there, yeah. are all wonderful players and, and they'll help, they'll be here for a wee while. Mate, Rafael will agree with me here. Believe me when I say this, see international football, it is so different to domestic football or even playing in Europe. Well, I don't know uh, whether, whether it be in Europa League or whether it's Champions League. But how do we make the jump then, Barry? Because, you know, he's saying there's young players coming through. Mm -hmm. Now, my attitude to this is they may well be young, yep. but they're not good enough. And I'll tell you why they're not good enough. Because, quite simply, Celtic, in European football, yep, are a no, mediocre okay, Europa League side. Mm -hmm. Rangers, you know, group stages of Europa League, so what? Nobody that they supplied, they didn't supply anybody of, of note to the team. Aberdeen's... The St. Johnstons, the Hibs, the Hearts, they never get to the group stages of the Europa League now. I think somebody pointed out to me, oh, Aberdeen got to uh, the UEFA Cup against Bayern Munich, you know, a good 10 years or so ago. Mm -hmm. That's ages, that's ages yeah. ago. Our standard of football is poor here. Yep, yeah, I agree with you, but see the seven and eight players that I mentioned there? I think if you give them a bit of time, a bit more experience, because if you look at the amount of caps I've got, there's not a lot. I think, bide with them. Give them a bit of time, I think a year, I know a lot of people, you don't get a lot of time, certainly up here with the, the media and the press coverage, um, but listen, I think if you bide with these boys, you stick by them, I think the seven or eight players that I mentioned are very good players, and I think they can I, I, take Scotland forward, we just now need to add <coughs> round about that, and I think that's what Alec will be writing down and thinking, right, look at these seven or eight players I've got, these are good quality players. Now, I need to build my team round about these. Yeah. Our problem, uh, and I accept you know, some of the points you're making and some players could come through, our problem is, Ruffy, as well, as well as the apathy and the toxic nature of the game yep. at the end of the game where the Tartan army were not happy at all, we also have a situation where we've waited such a long time and we've heard this same record over yeah. and over and over again. Somebody's coming through, this will emerge, that will emerge. It I'm doesn't happen. Through, Peter, it, 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 it runs deeper. We don't produce enough good players. It's simple as that. Whether that's through the pro youth thing that they've got now, we do not produce good enough players now. I, th I think we've lost too many experienced players at the one time. You think of the players that we Gordon had at the end of that campaign. You know, the Riches and all them playing with Newcastle, Alan McGregor retires, Scott Brown retires, you know, all the guys, Fletchers. Uh, you, you, could, you could have a whole team of experienced players. We've not got them now. 
these are the experienced players, these young boys, you know, that have got to just sit in uh, for the next two or three years and just battle away and see what we can get out of this group. Yeah, well, here's a look at the group table to see exactly how we're faring after that win over San Marino. We've got the three points then. It's Cyprus who are up next. Kazakhstan, Russia and no surprise Belgium with maximum points from their opening two games. Here's what we've got to look forward to coming up in the summer. Uh, as far as the uh, next set of qualifiers, Scotland, Cyprus at home, June the 8th, and then Belgium, Scotland. Fair to say we should be taking three out of six there? We should be beating Cyprus, that's without a doubt. Um, Belgium, <laughs> that's going to be a tough one. They've got some world class players. Um, but Cyprus, we should take care of them, no problem. That should be three points, that's a given for me. Listen, I know you need to earn the right to, to beat these sort of teams, but. We should be beating Cyprus easy this world. Yeah, I think at home we've got to show people that we have got flair players. We've got to get the team selection that is uh, want to go forward and score goals. I mean, if you look at that game yesterday, if it had went Alex's way and the players' way, we could have had five. No, there was enough chances there. It wasn't as if we never created anything. So maybe it's just one of these games that we need to go into with Cyprus and everything just clicks and yeah. we get a reasonable result and we can go to Belgium and try and get something out of that. Yeah, McNulty's was a sitter, Ruffy. I'm, I'm not too sure that there was four or five goals in us, to be perfectly honest with you, yeah. but um, certainly maybe three, maybe, maybe yeah, four. Armstrong's one in the first half. Uh, normally he finishes um, them off. He yeah. got a second chance, and they'd be fair to the goalkeeper. He made a good save. He made a very good save, but I think three or four goals would have been... I think that would have been okay. I don't think we were ever going to get six and sevens as yeah. people were talking about. Just out of curiosity, it, it, it's obviously looking back, but trying to look forward as well. Do you think the Kazakhstan result will come back to haunt us? I mean, Russia dismantled them yeah. by four goals to nil. Do you think that's the? Is that the? If Georgia was the noose around Gordon Strachan's neck, is is Kazakhstan the one that really? Uh, well, as it is, I mean, I don't think we're ever going to take any of Belgium. So you're looking at Russia. So you've got to match nearly everything they do, you know, and that puts us under pressure. It means we've got to go to Russia and take something out of that game, uh, which will be a big ask, you know. But I, I think we really need to just concentrate on the games that are coming up. But you're right, it might be at the end of the day. Yeah, OK. Um, well, you can give us your thoughts on Alex McLeish. So many people calling for his head. Um, you can give us your thoughts on who you think is going to get more out of this uh, Scotland squad. Is it about the organisation, the way he sets them up? Is he picking the right players? Should we be taking a leaf out of Northern Ireland's book, possibly Wales, and the way they go about their business, although we don't have a world-class player in Gareth Bale? Um, we don't even have someone, I think, maybe even of the standard of uh, Aaron Ramsey. But give us your thoughts on it. Let us know what you think. Um, over and above that, um, Kieran Tierney, Travelled all the way there to Kazakhstan, didn't uh, get picked because of the injury. It looks as if he could be declared fit for the big one on Sunday, roughly against Rangers. Yeah, well, as Barry said, I think the good point it was he, he was actually there. The, the doctors could assess the injury that he's got. Obviously, he would get treatment when he's there as well. So, you know, having looked above board, I don't think we're going to have anything, uh, any queries about that. You know, some people might say, why is he not coming under the, the international stipulation that if you're not fit, you can't play for your team within a certain amount of days? But yeah. if he's there and he, he's letting the national side know the extent of his injuries, I don't think he should have a problem with that. Uh, it doesn't strike me a boy. He, he strikes me as a boy that would want to play. So... As Ruffy says, he's travelled to Kazakhstan, which shows me that where his loyalty lies, and he's wanting to be part of that squad. So I, I don't think I, I've not got a problem because I would, I would trust him um, that he has got an injury. So yeah, and it's always the fear though, Barry, uh, coming up to the huge game at Celtic Park, Celtic against Rangers. Both managers will be looking and thinking. Who's coming back off international duty injured? That's the last thing uh, that you want. I don't think Steven Gerrard wants anything other than as, as strong a squad as he could possibly get to go into this one. Well, Rangers will need to have their strongest uh, team available if they want to try and get anything off Celtic at, at Celtic Park. Um, I'm sure Lenny would have been a happy manager with, with James Forrest only getting 20 minutes last night because he's a massive player for Celtic. Obviously, Callum McGregor as well. Um, he came off. So, no, look, if a club manager, they'll be, they would have been worried people yesterday watching uh, so many games and just thankfully that all their players are back fully fit and hopefully ready for, 
for the big one on Sunday. Yeah, um, Ryan Kent, uh, Mark Walters, um, a, a man you know well, reckons Rangers should pull out the stops to try and get him full-time. Do you think they'll have the budget to try and attract Kent on a full-time basis? I hope they'll have the budget, because um, he's a player that I think Rangers will need to keep if they want to push on again next season. I think he's been great for Rangers. He's shown that he can handle the pressures of playing it. Um, uh, a big club like Rangers, mm -hmm. so I think he's going to be key for Steven Gerrard in the summer. He'll be desperate to, to tie him up, and look, he'll be looking at the board to back him because he'll not be, he'll not come cheap. He'll be four or five million pound at least. So he's one that Rangers do really need to tie up. Yeah, OK. Um, from everyone in the football show, our best wishes to Gary McAllister. He suffered an attack in Leeds uh, at the weekend, Ruffy. Lost uh, two or three teeth. Um, you know, the world's gone mad. Yeah, it certainly has. If you're going on a, a night out with your wife and you know, you're just standing waiting on a taxi coming and you get attacked, it is just incredible. You know, it, it's, it is in this day and age, you know, that you can't go out and enjoy yourself. Yep, absolutely. Our thoughts uh, with Gary. Let's hope he gets a speedy recovery. Um, and of course, all our thoughts throughout the week will be looking towards that big game on Sunday. It's going to be uh, Celtic against Rangers. We will get a countdown for you all the way through the week. Hopefully you can join us. Thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.